Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and today we're doing another episode of Guns N' Roses True Story and now we're starting to get into the more popular Guns N' Roses songs, you know, Live and Let Die, uh, November Rain, Estranged and so forth and today we're talking about Civil War. Now Civil War is the first song that appears on Use Your Illusion 2 and it was written by Axel Slash and Duff. Now, before appearing on the Use Your Illusion 2 album, it actually appeared in 1990 on the Nobody's Child Romanian Angel Appeal, which was a charity album released in 1992 to basically benefit Romanian orphans. So other artists donating tracks, including the Traveling Wilbury, Stevie Wonder, Paul Simon and George Harrison, Eric Clapton, and Van Morrison, Guns N' Roses, of course, Ringo Starr, and Elton John. So the project was organized by Olivia Harrison, who created the actual foundation, and while with the other wives of the Beatles, including Barbara Bach, Yoko Ono, and Linda McCartney. So Axel was doing an interview with Rockline back in 1994 with Slash promoting the Spaghetti Incident, and he was asked by a caller about how Civil War ended up on the Benefit album. So it ended up on the Benefit album because according to Axel, Tom Petty called me and asked me, which was really weird, asked me if George Harrison could call me. And then George Harrison called me and we were talking and all of a sudden he started talking about his wife flying to Bangladesh. It just all of a sudden my mind was like boom, hyperspace, I'm talking to a Beatle and he was very Beatle-esque talking about Bangladesh. It was pretty wild. They asked me, they asked for the song and the inspiration was a friend asked me to write a song about just how crazy the world is and certain things and I thought it was an interesting subject and just Slash had this music and exactly fit what I had written. So in the previous interview I just read, Axel had talked about how a friend had asked him to write the song. Now according to uh, the Chinese Democracy excerpts or the booklet I think that came with the album, uh, Axel talked about how when he was married to Aaron Everly, his one-time momentary brother-in-law uh, was actually an international arms dealer. So he claimed that uh, this guy was the inspiration behind Civil War. And the song was actually written as per Axel's former brother-in-law's request. He'd asked Axel to write a song about how people were stupid and how he could sell them anything because people love to kill each other. Axel also said that his brother-in-law claimed to be an expert in global finance and money laundering, basically living tax-free in Bel Air. And Slash actually talked about collaborating with Axel on the song back in an interview he did with the Music Radar back in 2011. He said that was actually one of the first songs Axel and I wrote after Appetite. The tour wasn't even finished. Axel heard me playing this acoustic thing and we started rehearsing it with the band in Australia. It was also the first song where we went into the studio with Steven and realized that he wasn't really playing up to par. Now, the song was, of course, the brainchild of Axel, Slash, and Duff, and Slash stated that the song was an instrumental he'd written right before the band left for the Japanese leg of the Appetite for Destruction tour. That was around 1988, and Axel wrote the lyrics, and it was worked into a proper song at a sound check in Melbourne, Australia, back in 1988. And during an interview that Duff did back in September of 93 promoting his solo album, Duff said basically it was a riff that we would do at sound checks. Axel came up with a couple of lines at the beginning, and I went in a peace march when I was a little kid with my mom. I was like four years old for Martin Luther King. And that's when did you wear the black armband when they shot the man who said peace could last forever. It's just true life experiences really. Now looking at who played on the song, uh, this was the only song to actually feature Steven Adler on drums because of Steven's drug addiction at the time. They actually had to piece together a bunch of different drum sessions he did so I think the actual drum parts are from 60 different takes he did on the song the bass of course was played by Duff all the guitars were played by Slash Izzy didn't even play on the song and the piano was played by Dizzy and the background vocals were done by both Duff and Dizzy now the song is notable too because it samples Strother Martin's speech in the 1967 movie Cool Hand Luke and it also quotes a speech by a Peruvian shining guerrilla officer towards the end of the song when they say we practice selective annihilation of mayors and government officials, for example, to create a vacuum. Then we fill that vacuum as popular war advances, peace is closer. The song also includes the American Civil War song, When Johnny Comes Marching Home, which is whistled by Axel in the intro and outro as well. Now the band members have talked a lot about this song in the past, so Duff in his own autobiography back in 2011 said, talking about working on songs in Chicago without Axel and Izzy, he said, we did get some work done, we finished Civil War and wrote Get in the Ring and Pretty Tied Up to name a few. Now he did say previously that in 1988 when they were in Australia touring, they had wrote, wrote a basically a rough skeletal version of Civil War, but it seems like according to Duff it wasn't finished until they went to Chicago. 
and according to Slash, he said, We had a rough framework for Civil War kicking around since the first tour of Australia. I wrote the instrumentals, and Axel had written and revised the lyrics for it several times, but everything fell into place when we brought it out again. And in an interview that uh, Slash did back in April of 1992, he said it's the same version, just mixed better, referring to the difference between the version that was on the Romanian uh, Orphan album and then also the version that was on the Use Your Illusion 2 album. He said it's the same version, just mixed better. It was ironic in the timing when it came out. When we recorded that, it wasn't in our normal studio. I didn't have a normal amp. It was one of those things where we had to do it because we were doing it for the Benefit album, and it was a rush thing. The song was great, but Steven couldn't play. It took two days just to get the drums. That's out of the norm for us. I had to get a rented amp, and I wasn't particularly happy with the sound. Then Mike Klink tried to mix in a couple different studios. I wasn't happy with the mix, and we usually don't use Klink to mix. Uh, we sat in the mix, but I couldn't get it right. I don't like this. I didn't like the studio. When it came time to use it for our album, we had it mixed by Bill Price, who was awesome. Steven Adler also talked about the song in his autobiography, which came out in 2010. He said, when we returned to L.A. in 1989 for practicing for Use Your Illusion, we continued rehearsing exclusively at Bob Mate Studios in North Hollywood. It was during this time that we wrote a song that would eventually be called Civil War. It's amazing it was ever completed because on most days when I would come to rehearsals, Slash and Duff would show up drunk. I would get pissed as hell at the guys. I understood that partying went with rock and roll, but we had a record to do. Dizzy Reed even commented on the song uh, in an interview he did in September of 2014 with The Hub. He said, One of the banes of my existence as a keyboard player has always been the fact that bands like to tune down the guitars half a step, which I was unaware of when I first went into work on a song called Civil War, which was recorded by the original Guns N' Roses lineup. They asked me to come in and do that. They had an old Yamaha CP90 electric piano that they had tuned down half a step. Dizzy said, I don't have a perfect pitch, so I did know that we were playing an E-flat, and they had tuned down the whole piano a half a step down, rather than transposing as some of us do. So after these rehearsals, they called me in one night to come in and lay down the track. There was a big Steinway piano set up, and the track's almost done. It's about 2 in the morning, and I sat down to play it, and Slash and Duff and Axel are all in the control room. Went to play it, and it was half a step off. Suddenly, it all became clear that they had tuned down the rehearsal piano, or they were playing in a standard tuning just to mess with me. So I figured out quick how to play that song on the black keys. So Slash comes out with his guitar and says, Okay, here's how the song goes. And I say, No, I know the song, bro. I'm just trying to figure out how to play it in the right keys. So Slash asked Dizzy, What do you need? And Dizzy said, You know what? A bottle of 151 rum. And never having been part of the major recording session, I didn't realize the turnaround on a request like that. Literally within five minutes, there was a bottle of 151 rum sitting on the piano. I took a couple swigs of that, which is like drinking gasoline, and away we went, and the rest is history. Now, George Michael even commented on the song, so he did an interview with Kurt Loder back in 1990, and the topic of Axl Rose came up. And uh, while George Michael and Axl Rose weren't necessarily really good friends, they were friendly with each other, and George Michael had really good things to say about Axl, including the song Civil War. So here's a clip for you guys to check out. It's, uh, we're actually talking about this with Axl Rose recently. I gather you guys hang out together or know each other, right? You have we don't common... really hang out. We know each other. We've met each other two or three times. He seems a really nice guy. Have you found common artistic ground anywhere? I mean, might you ever do something together? Um, who knows? I mean, I think he'll probably be around for quite a while because I think he's got a lot of integrity yeah. and, his, and his songwriting seems to be really... I mean, the last thing I heard of the uh, Civil War yeah. I was really impressed by. I mean, at first I thought, to be honest with you, it seemed such a jump yeah. um, that I thought maybe it was, especially as it was on a, uh, like a charity album, I thought maybe it was a cover. But I was really impressed to hear that was his. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a great song. Have you, have you managed to find, my last question, have you managed to find the love in your life? And and then uh, Civil War was released in some countries as a single while it was released as an EP in other regions. Now, the actual EP features an interview with Slash, and I've actually linked to the interview uh, with Slash if you guys are interested in checking it out. Also, When You Could Be Mine was released as a single. Uh, Civil War was actually released as a B-side to the single. And when it was released as a single, Civil War actually reached number four on the mainstream rock charts. Civil War has been included on uh, several uh, tribute albums to Guns N' Roses, one of which is Strings of Fire, which came out back in the year 2000, and then it was also included on a tribute album that came out in 2002 from Deadline Records. It was covered by an artist named Christina Kartsonakis. And it's actually been covered by Rise Against as well, and of course Slash plays it when he's touring with Miles Kennedy. 
And there's also an acoustic version that Slash has done with Miles Kennedy as well. I've linked to those down below. And the American rock band Hoobastank also did a cover of Civil War in one of their live DVDs. And then the first time the song was ever played live was at Farm Aid back in 1990. This was Steven Adler's last show as a member of Guns N' Roses. He was fired from the band in April of 1990 before Matt Sorum was hired. And at the Farm Aid show, Guns played two songs that the public hadn't heard before, one of which was Civil War, and the other one was a UK sub song, Down on the Farm. Now that song would eventually be released on the Spaghetti Incident. Now, Stephen Adler recounted the concert at Farm Aid. He said, I assume we'd be playing a couple of our hits like Paradise City or Welcome to the Jungle. Axel announced, this is something new we got called Civil War. Although I knew the song, I didn't know that would be the title. So I looked at Duff and I was like, dude, what's going on? Although we didn't have that song completely down and never rehearsed it with Axel, it played pretty well. Now, if you actually watch the performance from Farm Aid, at the very beginning when Guns N' Roses go up to stage, uh, you can actually see that Steven Adler does like a face plant. Like he must have misjudged how far the actual drum kit was and he fell flat on his face. And Steven was on Howard Stern's show back in 1997 and he talked about his feelings on the Use Your Illusion records. He said he only played on Civil War, but then if you listen to the rest of the album, just the feel of the album changes after Civil War. Now let's talk about some notable live performances. So Guns N' Roses played Civil War pretty extensively during the Use Your Illusion tour. It was kind of stopped. Uh, they stopped being played once they hit the Skin and Bones tour. It wasn't really played during that period of time. And then it wasn't played for a very long time. But let's talk about some notable shows first. So the actual second night that Guns N' Roses played uh, Rock in Rio back on January 23rd, 1991, that was around the time the Gulf War was going on. So Axel actually dedicated Civil War to the soldiers fighting in the Persian Gulf at that concert. And even in Duff's book, he told a story about how when they were riding on their MGM 727, to Brazil, the pilot actually came on the intercom and basically told everybody that the Gulf War had started. And normally before Guns N' Roses plays Civil War, Slash would usually play the intro uh, of Voodoo Child by Jimi Hendrix. And then at a show that Guns played back in Noblesville, Indiana back in uh, May of 91, it's also known as the Homecoming Show, uh, that concert is available to watch on YouTube. There's full pro shot footage. Axel actually dedicated Civil War to all the military and the audience. And at that show, Axel actually had Sebastian Bach bring out a dancer during Rocket Queen as well. And this concert was the first time that November Rain was ever performed live. And then a month later in Landover, Maryland, Guns N' Roses were playing Civil War. And towards the end of Civil War, Axel actually jumped into the crowd to stop a security guard from beating up a fan. And the show ended, up, ended a bit early just because of a local curfew. And then at a show that Guns did in Lisbon, Portugal in July of 92, which there's a little bit of pro shot footage of and I've linked to down below, uh, Civil War had to be stopped because of uh, people in the audience throwing fireworks at each other. And then uh, at a show that Guns N' Roses played with Metallica in Montreal in August of 1992, that was the infamous Riot show, and that was also the same show where James Hetfield was burned by a pyrotechnics accident. Uh, that was the la Civil War was the last song that was played as part of Guns N' Roses' set before Axel walked off stage. And then Guns N' Roses canceled the next several shows, and their next show was actually on August 25th in Phoenix, Arizona. And at that concert, Axel dedicated Civil War to the state of Arizona in hopes that one day they recognize Martin Luther King Day as a state holiday. And, you know, for the longest time after the Use Your Illusion tour ended, uh, Guns N' Roses just never played Civil War as part of their set anymore. And their actual last time they played it live uh, in the Use Your Illusion days was at uh, Mount, Starts, Mount Smart Stadium in Auckland, New Zealand. And then they didn't play it live for almost 18 years. So then they finally brought it back out when they played a concert at Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee. And pretty much every concert from that point on, Civil War was pretty much included as part of the set list and has been played at pretty much every show as part of the reunion tour over the last year. And then back in 2008, when Axel was doing open chats with fans, he was asked by fans, will you ever bring Estranged back and Civil War? Because at that point in time, they hadn't played it for a while. And he sort of hinted that he'd like to bring it back at some point in time. Estranged was brought back in 2011 as well and has pretty much become a regular part of the GNR set list ever since. Now, let's talk about a notable concert that Guns N' Roses did last year as part of their reunion tour. So Guns N' Roses were playing Sao Paulo, Brazil, and Axel improvised a line during Civil War about President-elect Donald Trump. So the normal line in the song says, look at the fear we're feeding, and instead he replaced it with, look at the fear that Trump is feeding. So if you guys want to see it, I have a link to it down below. Now the song was also included on Guns N' Roses' Greatest Hits album, which was released in 2004. 
However, it was a strange omission from the Live Era album. Even though it was played quite frequently on the Use Your Illusion tour, it was not included on the live album. Instead, it was replaced with less popular tunes during the tour, including Pretty Tied Up and Move to the City. Now let's talk about the meaning of the song. So this is a song whose meaning is pretty obvious compared to a lot of other Guns N' Roses songs. So my take on the song is that, just like the lyrics say, the rich use wars to make themselves richer and the victims are sent out to die. They're often led to believe that they're on a holy crusade when all they're really doing is fighting to allow those in power to become more powerful. Their cause is never realized and in the end they die for nothing. And Civil War is also a metaphor. He sees the world as not one divided by countries, states, cities, or provinces. And basically all wars and conflict that take place on Earth is a civil war. Now there's actually a demo of the song available with vocals on it on YouTube. So I've linked the demo down below. So a local Seattle radio station did a countdown of the top 999 rock songs of all time. Now this was done in 2003 and it was voted on by their listeners. Now Guns N' Roses had a ton of songs. In the on the actual list and they even had two songs in the top 10. Now Civil War ranked 100th on the list. Now let's talk about where the song ranks on the Guns N' Roses best to worst song list. According to medium.com they ranked all of GNR's songs. They said it was the 11th best Guns N' Roses song out of 80 songs. Meanwhile spin.com it wasn't so high on their list. They ranked the 24th song which I definitely don't agree with. It's definitely in my top 10 songs. And meanwhile, uh, Ultimate Guitar ranked only Illusion songs. They said it's the third best song off the Illusions records, which I don't know if it's in my top five, but it's definitely in my top ten. So that does it for this episode, guys. It's definitely clocked in on one of our longest True Story episodes, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did I miss anything? And please hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode, and please share it with uh, all your friends and fans. And uh, please follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, my, the links to my social media icons are down below. And be sure to hit the subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all things Guns N' Roses and see more cool retrospectives like the one you just saw. So thanks for watching, guys, and have yourself a good day.